I became an historian originally as a result of reading fiction, which is a very, very common route. You read stories, often historical novels, and the first reaction, certainly on my part, was how much of this is true? I started to concentrate on the Carolingian period when I was an undergraduate. And in a way it was perverse because I found it much the most difficult of the periods to study of all those that I ever had studied. The reason being that there was so much that wasn't known. There were very few landmarks when I was studying it. The literature about it was primarily in French and German. All the sources are in Latin. And I simply enjoyed this process of not knowing an enormous amount, not knowing what the answers to problems were, and to venture out into the unknown with very, very little in the way of guidance. And when I was working on literacy and the whole spread and use of writing, and what I really wanted to establish was not so much how many people could read and write in the 8th and 9th centuries, which is actually rather a boring question, but really, how important was writing in that society? What did it matter? For what was it used? So what I have started to do is to think about an extraordinary history of the popes, written first of all in the sixth century, called the Liber Pontificalis. And the Liber Pontificalis records the history of the popes from St. Peter until the end of the ninth century. But in the 6th century, it was written for the first time. So what you have is a new kind of history created. Now, it's written, very interestingly, in the form of serial biography. So what I want to see is how far I can get with 6th and 7th century Rome from the point of view of the ways in which the popes represent their power and demonstrate their power, and what kind of impact that is having in subsequent centuries. The work I've done in recent years has focused very much more on not just the texts that were written, but actual attitudes to the past and representations of the past, and how people could use the past to manipulate the present in very interesting ways. Um, I've explained about the Liber Pontificalis and its use of the past to make a very strong political point. But one, one category of text I have done a great deal of work to, on in recent years is the Royal Frankish Annals and History Writing of the Frankish Period, which was a triumphalist text put together to manipulate people's understandings of why the Carolingians were the best thing that had ever happened to Europe and why the Franks were so important. And the way they structure the past in annal form makes a very strong point because it's a Christian text organized for the first time according to the year of our Lord's incarnation and the material they put in is as important as the material they leave out. The focus is triumphalist, as I have said. It's about the importance of Frankish rule, Frankish expansion into different areas to create the whole of the Carolingian Empire. So representations of the past is something I've become and, and still very interested in. One aspect of that is that the annals themselves have been received primarily by historians in the past, and I mean 19th and 20th century, as very neat editions, composite texts put together by 19th century editors. What I've also tried to do is to go back to the original evidence of these manuscripts and how they survive, in what form, how the manuscripts are put together, what texts are put with them, what that itself can tell you about the attitudes to the past of the people in the 9th century. <laughs>